Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole Cordemosh and today we are going to do a step-by-step -step voiceover tutorial. First I'm going to go through the supplies with you, so let's get started. I'll go through brushes first. To put in our wet on wet watercolor technique, we're going to use a flat brush. This is a one and a half inch Princeton Elite brush. My favorite brushes to use, they're also in the description below, all the supplies are, is the Black Velvet series brushes. They come to a very fine point and they hold a lot of water. I'm using an eight and a four. I always have a lifting brush handy, so just a flat brush that's thin and small like this to get into corners just to lift any imperfections and we're going to do some fun splattering techniques with an old toothbrush so when you load a toothbrush full of paint you want to have a nice watery mixture for our project it will be a watery mixture because we're going to do texture of the sand and you're just going to put it into the watery mixture and really get it into those bristles by rubbing it like that, okay? And then when we go to spray it onto our paper, we're gonna protect the area where we don't want the spray. And I like to flick my fingers across. You get a really nice, big, wide spray that way. So that is it for the brushes. Um, instead of using glasses to hold my water, I am a huge klutz. So I can't tell you how many times I've spilt water. So I just wanted to show you this water bucket I use. I know it's not pretty but boy, does it hold many three compartments here. It also has textures on the bottom so that you could really rinse out your brushes. And of course, this area is to hold your brushes as well. So it has a short, wide base and I've never dumped it. So this is a, a great water container to use. We have a lot of techniques we're gonna cover in today's lesson and we're gonna be doing the wax resist technique as well. So for that, you will need just a clear wax crayon. They're gonna give you a softer resist versus a very uh, stark contrast when you use masking fluid. Any masking fluid will do. You want to use an old brush for this and make sure that you dip your brush in, a, in soap first, like that liquid soap is perfect and really get it in the bristles before you dip it in your masking fluid and we're going to mask out the um, the glass that's in the picture okay so we're going to be using that as well to tape my paper down i like to use washi tape it comes in all sorts of colors so you could get white as well so i use this i find that it doesn't bleed underneath the tape uh, hardly ever have i ever had that problem with this company and it doesn't mar the paper when you take it off as well. My two favorite papers that I like to use is Arches. And most of my projects, I would say like 98% of my projects are always done on the cold press paper. Okay, so that has a toothiness to it. So it's either this brand, Arches, or the uh, Hunnamool collection series watercolor paper. Those are artist grade 100% cotton paper and I absolutely love them. They are a joy to paint on. Some paper towel, that's always a must in watercolor. And it's also handy to have spritz bottles when your paper starts drying. I have a fine mist spritz bottle as well as just a generic spritz bottle is fine as well. So now the fun part, the colors that we're gonna use for this project. I absolutely love this color. This is marine blue. I'm mixing it with Viridian Hue for the ocean. Now I wanted a cold blue for the sky. So I'm using like a cobalt blue for some shadowy areas and parts of the clouds. I'm using a really watery mixture of neutral tint and mineral violet. I love this mineral violet because it's very muted in color. And so it's really great for shadows. As far as the sand goes, I used yellow ochre and I also used some Van Dyke Brown. One of my absolute favorite colors that the cocktail glass is gonna be is this Quinacridin Scarlet. And this is the painting that we're gonna do. So let's get started. To prepare our paper, we will mask out the beautiful cocktail glass using your masking fluid. And then you're going to use your wax crayon 
to get the waves along the shoreline. So holding the crayon at different angles will also help pick up the toothiness of the paper and you'll get some very cool effects. Starting with the sky, we're going to work wet on wet watercolor technique and we're just wetting the top half right to the horizon line with our one and a half inch brush. So you want to wet that really well and then you are going to put down your cool blue color or whichever cool blue color you choose to use. Making the blue color stronger towards the top of the paper and then I am just taking a damp brush to lift out areas where I want to put the clouds. Coming in with some neutral tint and that mineral violet that I showed you we are putting in some fluffy clouds. So I keep adding colors and blotting out areas until I'm happy with the effects that I'm getting for these soft distant clouds. So we're going to let our sky dry completely before we work on the ocean. You can keep your hands steady by keeping the palm down, making contact with the paper so that you drag your brush across in one fluid motion. So now I'm spritzing the bottom of the paper and I'm going to add in my watery mixture of yellow ochre and a bit of brown as well. Covering the top part of our painting, I'm using the toothbrush loaded up with your browns like I showed you. And then you're going to spatter that on using a paper towel or another piece of paper to protect the top part of the page. Let that whole thing dry and then I am wanting to create more distance in this painting by darkening up that horizon line. Okay, the water will be darker uh, the farther away it is from us. I'm also added in that shadow of the glass using my mineral violets and browns. After taking off the masking fluid, make sure that your paper is bone dry before you take off the masking fluid. Ask me how I know this. It will mar your paper if you don't let your paper dry completely first. Now we were still working wet on wet for parts of this glass so that we have a very nice variegated wash. Notice from the reference photo that this frosty glass is less pink on the top and more saturated down towards the bottom. So I'm trying to mimic this by dropping in a stronger wash towards the bottom. Now there are reflections of blues and the sand and all sorts of different reflections on the glass itself that I am putting in with the sky blue color. So I'm following my reference photo and I'm adding in those details of the glass itself. Now that the Quinn Scarlet area is pretty dry, before I let the whole thing dry, I really want to get that 
pop of color in this. This is the focal point. I am increasing the saturation of that Quinn Scarlet. So you have to remember that watercolors will fade by 20% once they're dry. Using my lifting brush, I am just trying to clean up my edges a little bit. I'm using a very watery mixture of that same neutral tint and mineral violet to get the shadows under the waves. And uh, last minute I decided to add a little bit more white to the waves, just where I wanted it a bit more frothy, as well as the reflections in the glass. I use Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White for my opaque watercolor white. So you can sign your painting and go soak up the sun with a cocktail. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and if you like my artwork please subscribe and smash that like button. I appreciate your support so much. Thank you and I will see you next week.